Scotch is a type of whiskey. Like I said, the same way that a Volkswagen is a type of car. Um, uh, bourbon is a type of whiskey. Uh, rye is a type of whiskey. These are all types of whiskeys. Um, whiskey, what a whiskey is, is uh, basically, um, in the Scotch world, it's basically boiled beer. Um, you take a mash uh, with, with uh, scotch tends to be barley, water, yeast. Um, basically, you create beer with that. Uh, the yeast reacts with the barley. You get alcohol. You take that. You take that liquid that's left. Uh, put it into a uh, pot still. Uh, boil it. Uh, the, the alcohol will rise, and the liquids that aren't alcohol will stay down. What makes it over the bend is what the scotch is. First thing is it's got to be made in Scotland. Someone tries to send in a uh, scotch from anyone in Scotland. <laughs> They're lying. To me. Uh, it's got to be uh, a minimum. Uh, it's got to be bottled at a, at a minimum of 40% alcohol. You'll notice most of these are between 40 and 45% alcohol. Um, the other thing, it's got to be uh, it's got to be matured in an oak cast for a minimum of three hours. The barrel gives you a massive amount of flavor. Wow. It really defines, and the type of barrels used for scotch tend to be, have been used for something else. Most of the barrels from the bourbon industry in the United States get immediately sent over to Scotland. There's a lot of the whiskeys that are sitting over there on the shelf have been aged in ex bourbon barrels. And there's also a different type of oak. Um, it could be American oak or European oak. American oak, you tend to have uh, lighter flavors, vanilla tones, like tropical fruits. And then you have your European oak, which is red in, in consistency and gives it more uh, subtle, uh, nutty flavors, uh, spicy, um, dried fruits. Uh, they're very different. This is an example of a, uh, a European uh, aged whiskey. It's an European oak sherry cask. It's very dark. Now this one is 21 years. It's been sitting in the barrel for three years longer and you can see it's much lighter even though it's been sitting in the barrel longer. These had very different flavor characters. They came off, they all came off the same still. It's the same new spirit but it's really the barrels. Now the other type of things with scotch is we're going to start you off with a blended scotch. Distilleries originally couldn't make a consistent product. There's about 90 to 100 distilleries in Scotland that they close and open. I'm not exactly sure the same numbers. Back probably before the 1950s, but don't quote me on that date, they couldn't create a consistent product. Um, all the way through the 1700s, 1800s, it was up to blenders to take what was available from the distilleries, blend them together, and create something consistent. Uh, the famous grouse is an example of a, a blended scotch. That's, that's this, different from a single malt. Uh, it is. A single malt is an expression of one distillery. Uh, a blend is a combination of anywhere ranging from you know, five to 50 single malts. This has about 20 to 25 single malts. In this blend, we have Highland Park, uh, McKellen, and some other some other single malts. But they, they, they'll blend single malts along with grain whiskeys. Um, these are married afterwards, which means uh, they don't just blend them and put them in the bottle. They blend the whiskeys together. They'll let them sit in a, uh, in a cask. I believe they use sherry casks, uh, European sherry casks for famous grouse. They'll let it marry for six months or so to kind of let them get to know each other, the flavors, the fight. And, uh, and this particular blend is, um, if it doesn't have an age on it, it has to be a minimum of three years. So everything in this bottle uh, has to be aged for a minimum of three years. Well, we, we've been doing a lot of talking. Let's do some things. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get everyone involved. Um, so you'll see that the color is hot. It's a little lighter, and that comes from, it's, it's been aged for a minimum of three years. Um, it has a lighter color to it. Uh, the next thing, you want to nose it. Now, be careful when you do this. It's, this isn't a wine. This has got about a lot of alcohol in it. You can easily burn your palate. So you just, just slowly nose it. You don't want to take deep breaths in. Um, and then you taste. And when you taste, you may want to try to just take a little on your palate, let it roll around a little bit, swallow, and then you're going to get the finish. That's nice. It is very nice. That's the blend. So this is a blended scotch. Now, another thing, 
Um, a lot of people, you're going to get run into uh, two types of people that drink scotch. People that refuse to add water or anything to their scotch, where they say it's almost sacral. You can't add anything. I highly recommend adding a drop or two of water, an ice cube. Okay. It, what it does is it'll, it'll open it up. Um, it really, it, when you do it, you just want to add out. A couple drops. It smooths it out. Yeah. Um, but this is now. Don't let anyone tell you how to drink your whiskey. This is the number one rule. Um, find out for yourself. Um, You're telling us. Well, I'm saying try things. <laughs> try. A lot of people won't even try it with water. A lot of people will try it. Right, won't right. even try it with ice. It's strict um, about it. The, the whole point of tastings is to try new things. This right. is what you do. Like. Yeah. Um, so you may find out that you like it without them, and that's how you like to taste it. Um, a lot of people will find they do like it. The other thing, a lot of people have this idea that uh, a blended scotch strictly is that it's a scotch. It can also be mixed in a great cocktails. Um, in particular, the famous grouse mixes very well with ginger. Um, it's both like grouse and ginger. It, it works with a lot of whiskeys, but I feel the, the flavor profile of this mixes really well with ginger. So now that you've gotten a, a taste of what it tastes like straight, uh, a taste of what it tastes like with a little bit of water in there, um, we'll try it with a little ginger ale to give you an idea of how it can mix um, for an everyday type drink, something you might order at a bar. But we're going to have uh, a simple one, uh, a highball as they call it, which is just a very quick drink. I'll give you a whole, I'll give you a whole uh, history of what a highball is. Back in the, I think in the early 1900s, uh, when trains were late, uh, the conductor at the station that the train was coming into would put a ball up in front of the tracks and raise it in the air. And it meant it was a sign to the conductor to pick up the pace, you gotta get going faster to the next station. It was called a highball. So if you saw a highball, you need to pick things up. Now, when things get going at a bar, uh, you don't have a lot of time, you wanna make highballs, which are quick cocktails. They tend to be uh, some, one whiskey with one mixer, and you can get them out of the That's really the whole material. Our modern really version is Larry. <laughs> So I it's believe, like the highball. But. And that's that's kind of the history of where a highball comes from. So anything that's a quick drink uh, is a highball. Cheers. 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 Thank you. Mm. It is good. Yeah. This is very good. People are surprised when it tastes it. They don't really expect that. With a little lime, it gets even a little bit better. It's refreshing. about to follow line two. Line two. I want to give you an idea of the range. People have an idea that most scotches are all the same. They have a bite. There's a, a very large range of flavors in these scotches.